You've seen me in this position before. Didn't go well, folks. Hello again, fellow YouTubers and fellow Bond fans. Solomon Pleasant back for our second last James Bond movie review. Well, we got one more after this one, folks. And, um... I pretty much decided that we're not really going to be changing the name. We're just going to keep it to Solomon Pleasant and pretty much have everything now be Solomon Pleasant production. So... There's that. Okay, so the film we are reviewing today is considered by pretty much every Bond fan ever to be the worst Bond film of the bunch. Doesn't make it a bad film, because all Bond films are gold. But, if there was one Bond film, if you could get a bunch of Bond fans together in a room and say, hey, out of every Bond film, which one do you think didn't do the best. I'm pretty sure 9 out of 10, because I can't say 10 out of 10, that would just be too obvious, 9 out of 10 would say this one. So, let us dive right into one of the most hated of the Bond films, other than Die Another Day, one of the most hated Bond films ever, Quantum of Solace. So, we're diving right into Quantum of Solace. And as usual, we start out with story. Now, story for this one is, um... To sum it all up, it's all over the place. It really is. I mean, your, your villain's trying to, like withheld water, and yet they have oil. I honestly have no real clue what's going on here. They're, they try to have a villain corporation. It doesn't work. They just don't work with it. I mean, nothing in the story really works because it's all over the place, and that's why it's hard to explain. Now, the story starts out pretty, pretty much like how Casino Royale left off. They captured Mr. White, who, will, who I didn't actually really talk about my Casino Royale the review, but he's basically one of the men for this organization of some sort, and they start by interrogating him. This is the only part of the film that really does anything, because it's bouncing kind of off the last film, really. And while this film tries to bounce off the last film, it doesn't really work, because it doesn't use anything, really, from the last film, other than Mr. White, who escapes anyway. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. They focus on Bond's girlfriend who died in Casino Royale spoilers, but he gets over it. So, the story's just all over. I have no real clue what the villain's scheme was. I honestly don't know. Because it never is really fully explained in a way that would work with this audience. So, having that said, story gets a half a star because it just, it, it's all over the place. It can't come together in work as a film. It just doesn't. Half star. <laughs> Moving on to scenery. Scenery is again all over the place, although I will give the film some credit. In the opening sequence with the driving scene, I mean, that's actually pretty okay. I think that's an okay opening sequence. And then um, when they're in tier game, Mr. White, I'd say that's pretty okay. I don't know why it ends there, but we'll save that for characters. Um, the fight scene with that one agent and Bond on that glass thing where it's all Cirque du Soleil-ish, that's actually pretty good. But then the rest of it's just like, okay, what what's this? I mean, the action scenes are okay at best, but the rest of the scenery just doesn't work. And there's like friggin' note cards that show up to say what city it is. It's like, the heck are these things here for? It doesn't make any sense. So, for the most part, scenery just doesn't really work except for the action scenes, which I guess is a step in the right direction, but it still just doesn't work well with the story or work well as a There are some good ones. I will give the story, the film credit for at least putting some in, 
but most of them just don't really work. So for that reason, I give it a half a star as well. Moving on to follow-up. Now, in my last review, I kind of blankly stated I wasn't the biggest fan of Casino Royale. This one does not follow up Casino Royale, though, because Casino Royale, I will give it some credit. It had a story. It had good scenery. The action scenes weren't the best in that one, but it didn't necessarily need action scenes. The characters were a little bit better developed in that one. The theme song is way better in that one, so... This Quantum doesn't follow up Casino Royale at all. You think with my negative review, this would be easy to follow up, but no. No, because it doesn't follow up at all. It just doesn't. Having that said, I can follow up also a half a star, because it just doesn't follow up Casino at all. It doesn't. Moving on to theme song. Now, a lot of Bond fans really hate this theme. And I'm not going to say I'm not one of them because I'm not the biggest fan. This isn't, however, the, my least favorite. I, this one is okay for me. Yes, I acknowledge it's all over the place. Yes, I acknowledge it's not consistent at all. I'll still listen to this before I listen to some of the other Bond themes. For your eyes only being the perfect example because that one I just cannot listen to because it's so boring. Just some of the themes are so boring. This one at least isn't boring. It's at least energetic. So I give it props for that. That aside though, it's still not really that good. So I give theme song half a star as well because it's just, yeah, I still can understand why a lot of ba Bond fans don't like that. Finally, moving on to characters. Daniel Craig is probably the only... Bond, I guess, is the only character that actually works in this film. Everything else does not work in this film at all. James Bond is the only thing that works here. Daniel Craig does an okay job in Quantum. He's trying. I can... He is trying to save this sinking ship. He is trying, but nobody else is, and that's where the problems come in. You got the Bond girl, who is there for pretty much no reason. I have no wide, real clue why she's there. I mean, ooh, she has a vendetta with one of the bad guys. Okay. We've had that work before, but... No real reason why she should be with Bond. I really don't see a reason. Um, Q Branch isn't existent in this film, like in Casino, but Casino had a reason. This one doesn't. M, for some reason, is all over the place in this film, constantly throwing herself into danger, which at first I didn't notice, but after I watched a couple of things, I noticed, and I'm like, oh yeah, you're right, why is she constantly throwing herself into danger? Um, that one field agent that got covered in oil, gee, I wonder if that's referencing Goldfinger at all. Yeah, and then M comes in, it's just like, M, why are you here? It it's weird, she's all, she's interrogating Mr. White at the beginning, that makes no sense. I'm not going to count... I'm going to talk a little bit about Mr. White and villains, I guess. I mean, I don't know what he was. I We don't see him in the next film, and... He just disappears in this film. I have no idea who he was, or what he was doing, or what the organization was even about. Speaking of which, moving on to... Oh, was there any help in this film? No. Um, villains. There's the one henchman named Elvis. He is the worst henchman ever. He does absolutely nothing. That's out of the way. Villains. You got Dominic Green, who I think could have had some potential, but doesn't. Because he doesn't do really anything. I think out of the villains that they give in this film, he's probably the best, but that's not saying much. There's General, who, what's his face? He doesn't contribute really that much. And then you got Mr. White, who's there, and then he's gone in, like, the beginning of the film. I still don't know why he was there. I mean, we don't see him in the next one, so I don't know why he was really there. But going back to Dominic Green, I don't know what his plan is at all. I really have absolutely no idea what this guy's plan was. 
What, what was he trying to do? Hoard the water? Hoard oil? I don't know. I really have no clue on this one. And he does deliver an okay performance, and he is one of the few Bond villains that isn't necessarily killed by Bond, although Lashif is the other one. That's besides the point. And the way he dies, though, I will give this, is actually kind of uh, interesting. Like, at the end, when Bond's talking to M, it's just like, Oh, um, by the way, you know that Dominic Green character? Yeah, we found him in the middle of the desert with, um, two bullets in the back of his skull and a gallon of motor oil in his stomach. Would you know anything about that? Bond's just like, um, no, 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 I know nothing about that motor oil or those bullets. Absolutely nothing. But when he confronted Green, he just gives him a can of motor oil and it's like, I bet you go two miles before dr considering drinking that. That's probably the one thing from this film that I actually liked. Because that was actually pretty good. It's just like, yeah, thanks for telling me everything about your organization known as Quantum. I'm ditching you. So good. And speaking of Quantum, what is Quantum? We have no idea what Quantum is. We are never told what or who Quantum is. They say, yeah, I told you everything you need to know about Quantum. What's Quantum? Nothing? Okay. Considering in the next film, and I've been referencing it a lot, I know, in the next film, we don't even hear a single thing about Quantum. It's just like, up, 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 up. no, I have no idea what Quantum is. So, yeah. So, all in all, I give characters a half a star. All the other, all the characters are underwhelming. Bond is the only one that does anything in this film. Characters, half star. So in total, I'm pretty sure that's a 7.5. So I know most of these Bond reviews, I've only given like two 7.5s, so that's not bad. Yeah, I'm one of those people who agrees with most people. Quantum of Solace just didn't work. It just didn't. And I'm willing to accept that. <sighs> well, that was painful. Um... Yeah, so this is our second last one. We only got like one more to do after this. And speaking of which, what are we doing for our last Bond movie review until 2015 or something when the next one comes out? We, we get to do that one? on a good note, people. We are ending on a good note. Yes! You know what's next week. Our last review until, like, some point in time, whenever the next one comes out. And while I'm on that subject, um... Screw it, I'll talk more about it in the last review. Next time! This has been Solomon Pleasant, signing off. Yes!